meeting today with Manuel Chavez, who is running for City Council in District 4. Thank you for meeting with us today. Thank you for having me here today. Now, the first question we're asking everyone is, what is your connection to the city? What have you done for Costa Mesa? Oh gosh, where to begin? Well, I think for me the first thing I should mention is that this is my home. This is where I grew up and here my entire life. So when I was growing up, I lived behind in and out on 19th Street and Anaheim. And then after my sister was born, I moved to Victoria School. Sorry, Victoria Street off of uh, Pomona. Um, my biggest contribution to this city has been really here at Save Our Youth, or SOI. Um, it's the heart of the West Side, in my opinion. You know, it's where I first came to get free tutoring when I was at Team Angola in Estancia. It's the place that showed me I can actually go to college and believe in myself. And it's a place where I felt the need to give back to others who grew up like me in West Side Costa Mesa. So, uh, do you currently work with SOI? So, I'm currently, a, I'm currently a mentor for one of the students here at Saber Youth. Um, after college, I got a little harder with working. So, I kind of just toned down a lot of my tutoring, just being mentorship with uh, one, one mentee. So, you um, attended SOI, mm -hmm. and now you're a mentor for SOI. You went to college, and now you're running for city council candidate. So, that program really works. Exactly. <laughs> it's great that we have things like that for our city. Best you could describe it. Where is District 4, and who are you running against? Best I can describe it, that's a good question, because it's kind of so gerrymandered with District 4 and District 5. I would say it's the heart of the West Side. You know, our district's the most dense in Costa Mesa, has the most apartments, the most um, dense condominiums. It's kind of the place that people gloss over when they have Costa Mesa. You know, the boundaries extend from, in a nutshell, from Harbor to Placentia, from Joanne to 19th Street, with a few uh, blocks beneath 19th Street that go up to Chalamar. Um, to me, this is, this is my home. I mean, my running joke always was that mom said, don't leave that box as a kid. So I've been here my whole life. And who are you running against in District 4? So I'm running against Stephen Chen and Michelle Figueroa Wilson. But really, in my opinion, I'm not running against them. I'm running for District 4. You mentioned it has the most apartments. Um, some people have been saying you've spoken out in favor of rent control. Is that correct? Yeah. So uh, let me clarify that a bit more, just for everyone's um, clarification. I'm for voting yes on Prop 10, which would allow cities to have the option to do so. You know, for me, it was an easy thing to say or even consider. But when visiting voters in my, in my neighborhood and talking to people, I realized how much the price of rent is integral to a lot of our problems that don't relate to safety, like homelessness or other things like that. For example, a lot of families double up and triple up in apartments that only have one or two garages for cars. What happens with that is you get more people density. There's more cars and people in an apartment that's designed for maybe two or three. So those cars bleed into the streets. What happens is eventually the street that you live on gets full and you go elsewhere. And that bleeds into single family residencies. For me, the two most common things I hear on the campaign trail are I can't find parking and rent's too high. For me, rent control could be a solution to solve both these problems. It's pragmatic, and mind you, I can't do it by myself. I'm on city council. I need other votes too. And I don't know if I'll get those votes. But I do know is that I'll be, I'll be willing to advocate for this as a solution for my community and my district. You mentioned um, that was the biggest complaints you're hearing on the campaign trail. What are some other complaints you're hearing? Infrastructure and safety are the two biggest ones. Safety really more near 19th Street. A lot of the moms on Pomona don't feel comfortable walking anymore in the mornings and their morning walks that they do since they live here because of the safety issue. One thing too is they feel like the police don't patrol as often in the west side as other parts of town. And I kind of agree with that a little bit. I think our police are wonderful and they do a great job. However, I have to admit that our permit parking doesn't get checked as often. I have to admit that I don't see many patrol cars rolling through my neighborhood. So I, I want to see better improvements for our community because little things like that do make a big difference. In terms of infrastructure, we're in a prime location to talk about, talk about this. We're on Mayor Street, at least to 19th Street, where, where, the, where, the, where the DMV is. On this street, there's Ray Elementary School and there's Save Our Youth. All throughout the day, there's kids walking to school or, to, or Save Our Youth. And there's no speed bump or stop sign anywhere on this street. Now in comparison, a street over on Maple Street, there's speed bumps. I don't want to say, I don't want to hazard a guess to why, but I think as a city, we need to be really looking at the, the areas that need the most help, like Mayor Street, because our kids are at risk when they walk that street. 
Is homelessness a big issue in District 4? Yes. You know, we have a big concentration of people who are homeless on 19th Street. You know, just the other day, my apartment on Victoria had a homeless man sleeping behind the dumpster. And the thing is, I know I'm not the only person that has this issue. When I walk the entire district, when I walk on Wallace, when I walk on, on Shalimar, everyone's facing the same issue. There's homeless people everywhere. It's gotten to the point where, as a kid growing up, I'd always go to, par uh, I'd always go to airplane park. Or in Spanish, el parque del avión. I know that, I love that you called it airplane park, because yeah, that's, what, that's what everyone knows. It's airplane park, I'm sorry. I know it's called Lions Park, but. No, it's airplane park. Airplane park. park. And, you know, I love going there. My routine every weekend was to go to the library and then to airplane park and then go home and, and, and like, you know, read the books I got. My little sister is about 13 years younger than me. She's never had that routine. In fact, I don't think she's ever, ever been to airplane park. This is an issue. And for me, it's really about tackling it head on because I've been here my whole life and I've seen it get worse. I've seen inaction. And for my neighborhoods, for my neighborhoods, for my community, I want to see action be put forth. So how can you address it on city council? I think the first thing is first, we need to have more shelter beds. You know, we can't enforce our anti-camping ordinances without having 50 more shelter beds. Now, I said this, I said this in the forum last week, and I'll say it again. I want to make sure that these beds are not just in Westside Costa Mesa. Every time there's something in Costa Mesa, it always gets in here. New, new buildings, it comes here. Shelter, I'm going to bet people will mention us as a prime location for that. I think it's time for us to be fair about Westside Costa Mesa and be fair to our residents here because it's a burden for all of us to share, not just us. You had mentioned um, development, everything new goes into the west side. So what are your thoughts on any new development? It's, it's one of those things where it's really interesting, right? Because I've seen both sides of the, of, the, of the aisle. I've seen an empty church become a nice complex of condominiums that I know will help increase revenue for schools like Ray and Pomona. And I've also seen friends be evicted and see their homes turn, turn to condominiums. I know we need growth in our city. I know it's an important part of the city. But I want to make, I want to stress the importance of the human element. People who grew up here and spent their lives here and invested in our city, paid tax dollars, were evicted because someone in city council said, what's the Costa Mesa as a swamp and, and, we get, and we get rid of the algorithms in there? And to me, that, that's something that has to be discussed in this election. Because my entire life growing up here, I felt like I didn't belong in the city. So I felt like City Hall wasn't there addressing our needs. They saw us as a commodity, a nice piece of real estate next to the beach. What about the needle exchange? That's a really hot, top, hot button topic right now. I'm totally against it. I mean, it's right across the street, the street from Whittier School. And if you know the area, a lot of the kids in Whittier walk to Whittier. They walk all down that street to the point where you have, you have walking um, assistance almost up to Newport Boulevard. When you have that much exposure of children walking, you can't have a problem like that. You just can't. Have silver living homes been a problem for District 4? You know, it's funny you mention that. Because when I've, been, when I've been canvassing, I've encountered two residents complaining about them. Now, now that isn't a lot. And, and, and that is to say it's not an issue. It's just to say we don't have the highest concentration of them in the city. But we do have them. You know, just yesterday I was walking down Anaheim, and one of the, one of the neighbors was saying, how two years ago, a apartment next to them became a living home. And how ever since then, there's been noise and complaints. And, you know, for me, as someone who takes pride in this city, who loves the city to death, I want to know that we're giving the highest quality of life to our residents. You know, it's a very complex issue, but I think we have to be moving forward with smart solutions that put residents first, too. Now. We do want to talk about some of your donators. Mm -hmm. um, I check everyone's filings before I meet with them. And you did have a lot of local teachers. Mm -hmm. That was surprising. Um, how, why are the teachers supporting you? Well, I, I'll actually explain it to my, my parents. So my mom worked at Pomona as a teacher's aide since I was in fourth grade. And my stepdad is a custodian at Ray Elementary School. It's in my blood to be around schools because my parents both work in them. 
Um, so over the years, I met a lot, a, lot, a lot of teachers, and that's kind of how they came to know me. And they trusted me and that I'll be advocating for the best things for our community. Because the one thing for me that I always appreciate is, as someone who, who grew up in the West Side, I feel like I didn't belong like I before. And it was my teachers who said, you know what, you're a bright kid, you can get ahead. And I know for a lot of people in the West Side, it's our teachers that do that for us. Some other donators you have are um, the fire unions and uh, the police unions, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Do you feel that having them as a donor to your campaign is going to bias you towards any contract votes in the future? No. See, I take honor and be supported by our local firefighters and policemen because they keep us safe. But I'll tell you the same thing to everyone I meet. I'm beholden to one person only, the voters of the Costa Mesa District 4. You know, if you, if you donate to me, that shows me you believe in me and my message. But I don't take anyone into, into, I don't take anyone into consideration for any special, any special treatment. I'm not doing this for anyone other than my community. You are also, uh, you also received donations from Omar Siddiqui, who was running for, in the primaries for uh, Congress. Um, so that was impressive. Mm -hmm. um, I think actually out of all the candidates, you have the most impressive donations. Um, so let's move on to your age. Mm -hmm. I know that for a lot of people that's concerning. How can you reassure them that your age won't factor into this? Well, I'll say this. You know, I'm 23 years old, and that's 23 years of, of living in the district. That's 23 years of seeing things change and evolve and adapt. That's 23 years of genuine caring about this community. I didn't move in here. I didn't just run out of nowhere. I'm doing this for one simple reason. I want to get back to the community to help make me the person I am today. That's what I'm bringing to the table. Okay, so what made you want to run? That's a good question. And even part of me today doesn't really know the full answer of it. But I, I think in a nutshell is, you know, my entire life I felt like no one was hearing us in, in this district. My entire life I felt like, you know, we were being glossed over and, and, you know, we weren't on anyone's mind. And when that chance came to have district elections, I said to myself, if someone's going to run for this district, how can I make sure they're doing it for the right reasons? How can I make sure they're not doing it for a donor or for political gain? And I realized something. The only way I'll guarantee that doesn't happen is if I get in the ring. And I know for some people that may be kind of scary, but for me it was, you know, like I said before, this is my home. This made me the person I am today. And a small part of me, no, a big part of me feels like I have to give back. And I will. That was very passionate. Let's talk about some of your endorsements now. Um, not donors, endorsements. What are, who are some of your endorsers? I'm proud to be supported by, like I said, local teachers, by the um, Christina Fire Department, by the Orange County um, Democratic Party. Um, these are groups that you know, really see a lot of value in me and, and believe in me as a candidate. Um, I also have local endorsement as well from my, my friends, my neighbors, old classmates. I'm trying to make it as local as possible. One of your endorsements was David Hogg, who was a Parkland shooting survivor who is now an activist for gun control. How did you receive that endorsement? That one threw me off guard, I have to admit <laughs> to you. Because <laughs> I never met with him. I never really sat down with him. But I think to me what, what that was was kind of a, a shining light in a, bigger, in a bigger picture. You know, all throughout the country, we have people who are, for the first time, getting engaged in politics. Now, luckily for me, I've been involved since I was 18, voting every election cycle. But for someone like David Hogg, to see someone like me running a strong campaign for the community, I had to think that inspired him. I had to think that made him say, you know what, this is something special that I'll give a shout out to. You were also endorsed by Our Revolution Costa Mesa. How did you receive that endorsement? Well, like anything, you apply for it. Um, <laughs> and I think for me, it was really important to get that endorsement. You know, this district in the primary went for Bernie Sanders. It demonstrates that this district does believe in those values that he supports, um, as do I. So for me, it was very natural to go for that endorsement. What about the claims that you're a member of Antifa and Black Lives Matter? Okay, well, first of all, they're two different things entirely. But on the Antifa one, let me just be honest, I didn't know what it was until I Googled it. Um, 
I'm not part of Antifa. I say with full confidence. In terms of Black Lives Matter, that's a social movement. That isn't necessarily like something that you join. It's just a, a theme, an idea. Um, so I would just take this as a chance to say, to people who are attacking me and accusing me of things, maybe you should probably ask me personally what I'm for, because I'll tell you. One final question mm -hmm. is, why should the voters of District 4 vote for you? If you want someone who's doing it for the right reasons, for the community, then that's the vote, that person is me. I'm not running for a political gain. I'm not running for donors. I'm not running for anyone other than the community that I grew up in. For me, for me, it's a very simple thing. And I'm driven by this in my entire life. It's when someone helps me, I have to help others back in return. This city has helped me immensely. The city has given me everything that I know. A great college diploma, a great life, amazing family and friends. And for me, I have to give back. Make sure that everyone in the city has the same opportunities, if not better than I had.